All right, so like I said, we're going to look at some questions in momentum. Then afterwards, we'll look at uh, questions in thermodynamics. Yeah, so I'm going to be cutting each question I saw, I'll be cutting the recording so that at least you can, we can have a number of videos. Each, each question is going to have its own video. And so in this one, I'm going to solve one. Yeah, so if you have um, any questions or you want to know more about um, how I conduct the lessons and how much I charge for the lessons, you can simply use the lines on the screen and contact me on WhatsApp and, and let's see how we're going to help each other. I always offer tuitions in four courses. Uh, for, the, for first year, I, also, I offer four courses, that is mathematics, chemistry, physics, and bios. And then second year, I, I offer engineering courses, which is, um, okay, there are a lot of engineering courses that I offer, second, third, going up. So let's quickly begin. So we have the first question here, which says, a 1.2 kg wooden block rests on a table over a large hole. A five grams bullet with an initial velocity, VI, is fired upwards into the bottom of the block and remains in the, and, and remains in the block after the collision. The block and the bullet rise to a maximum height of uh, 22 centimeters. What is, uh, rather calculate the initial velocity of the bullet from the information provided. So the first thing, whenever you're solving a physics question, the first thing that you need to do is to write what is known as a free body diagram. And then apart from a free body diagram, you also need um, to understand, yeah, you also need to understand the question. And um, okay, there are three many steps that you need to follow. First of all, you write the data that you've been given. Then apart from that, you also write the free body diagram. And then lastly, you make sure that you understand the question before you start solving. So I think we can start. So let us write the data here. And then we're going to draw the free body diagram. So the data that has been given, so this is very important, data collection in physics, it's very important. Some, some lecturers or, teacher, or tutors, they even give marks for this. When you just write down the data, they'll give you something. So it's important to write this. The free body diagram always carries marks. So for that, you don't have to forget. Okay, so we begin the data. So we've been given to say there is, okay, the first statement there we have, a 1.2 kg wooden block rests on a table. So we have uh, the block one, so I'll call it B1. The mass for B1, okay, let me do it this way. I'll write the mass for B1, so I'll say mass for the block is equal to 1.2 kg. That is the first block. Okay, I think this one only has one block, so it's okay if we just write MB. So the mass for the first block is 1.2 kg. And then um, the saying it rests on the table, a five gram bullet. So the mass, so I'll say um, block for, I'll represent BL for block. And then I'm going to use uh, B for bullet. So the mass for the bullet is five grams, which can be converted to a kg as 0 0.005 kg. So we're using the SI units. So we have to convert it. Yeah, so you convert from grams to kg by dividing by 1000. Then the other thing that we've been given is um, the maximum height when the when the block um, the maximum height the block and the wasis and the bullet um, reached so the maximum height that that has been given is 22 centimeters which should also be converted to meters and this will give us 0 0.22 you divide um, you you make sure that you divide 
you divide it by 100 to convert it to meters. Then from there, we can draw a free body diagram. So we know to say there is a table. They're saying, they're saying um, a 1.25, oh, this, this is supposed to be 1.25. Okay, 1.25 wooden block rest on the table. So we have a 1.2 wooden block resting on the table. So this is just a quick one. So we have this um, block, 1.25 kg resting on the um or on the or on the table or on, on a very or on a table rather over a large hole so there is a hole somewhere here and then a bullet with the initial velocity vi is fired upwards so i'll just draw something that i'll call a bullet this this here so if one, you can even name this, you can say this one is a block, then this one is a bullet, and the direction of a bullet is this one. And then its velocity as vi. So initially, the, 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 what's this, the wooden block was at rest. Okay, so um, the question continues to say it's, um, I mean, VI is fired upwards into the bottom of the block and remains in the block after after the collision. So um, after this bullet had been fired into this block, the block, I mean, the bullet uh, got stuck into the block and it remained um, into the block after collision. So what this means is that the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block will be added to have two masses there. Okay, so if we use the conservation of momentum, we know to say um, the, what's this, the, the, the momentum uh, before collision will be equal to, the, the summation of momentums before collision will be equal to the momentum after collision. So will be, yeah. So what this means is that in the first place, we're going to have uh, M1, which is a mass for the bullet and its initial velocity. And uh, we say plus um, M2, which is the mass for the block and its initial velocity uh, and, and the initial velocity for the same block. We say this will be equal to um, the other masses this side. So when we add this mass and that mass, I mean, the, yeah, to find the, the mass is the final mass. We're supposed to add the, this mass and the mass, of, uh, the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block. And how do we do that? Or how does that come about? Remember, we are supposed to say, um, okay, let me just say the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Let, let, me put that, let me put it that way. So what this means is that this side, we're going to have... Um, this side we're going to have um, the same M1, uh, the same M1, and then the velocities when the bullet gets stuck into the uh, the, what's this, the the block as the block begins to go up, the velocity of the bullet and the block will just be the same. So we're going to just so we just call this as V. Then we say plus M2. And then this will also be V because the mass of the bullet, I mean, the, the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of, um, I mean, the velocity of the bullet and the velocity of the uh, block will be the same. That's why I've just got them V. Okay, so, um, so M, so what, what have we been given here? Have we been given M1? Yes, M2, yes. V initial of the bullet, which is V1, has we been given? It's the one that we're looking for. Yeah, it's the one that we're looking for. The question is asking us to calculate the initial velocity of a bullet. So V1 is the one, I mean, V1 is the one that we are looking for. And then the other thing is, the other thing we need to find is um, um, the velocity, the final velocity of uh, both the bullet and the block. So given the height, at which the block and the velocity have, um, went. When you use the formulas for projectile motion, you agree with me that 
the velocity of the bullet will be given by the square root of uh, 2gh. So this, G, this h is the height in meters, and then g is the gravity. So vb, which is the velocity of the bullet, I'm calling it, uh, rather the velocity of both the bullet and the block, will simply just be um, the square root of two times the gravity, which is 9.81, and then times the height. So the height is simply just 0 0.22 in meters, of course. So when you solve this, you're going to get something like, um, when you use the calculator, yeah, so when you multiply this and then you find the square root, you get 2.08 meters per second as your velocity. So this will be the final velocity for both the bullet and the blow. Okay, so now having found this, we can now use um, this equation here to find VI. But remember, the block was um, at initial, uh, was at rest rather, uh, before um, the bull, before, before it, before the bullet uh, was shot into it. So it was first at rest, meaning our V2, this one becomes what? Zero. So this part will be a zero. So meaning this part goes, I'm just going to remain with that part. Hence, this will be um, M, so this will be M, um, this will be M, or oh, let me just put in the figures now, because we have all the figures. Okay, so, so this will be M, um, rather this is M, so our first M, which is the mass of the bullet, is 0 0.005 and then v1 um, and then we have v1 which is the one that we're looking for the initial velocity of the bullet this part we said it's a zero so since it's a zero we can just leave it like that and then we have m1 and uh, vb so here when you see we have vb there and another vb so we can factorize vb so we can have M1 plus M2 and then VB outside there. So I have 0 0.005 VI, which is the initial velocity of a bullet. Then M1 and M2, when you add them, so we've been given M1 and M2. So M1 is 1.25, 1.25 and M2 is 0 0.05, so we can add them. We have 1.25 plus 0 0.005. And then you multiply this by VB, VB which was found to be 2.08. Yeah, so when you, um, when you do the simplifying there, you get, um, yeah, so when you simplify and uh, divide everything by, yeah, so when you simplify, divide everything by 0 0.005, you get the answer to be, so your VI, the initial velocity, is going to give you, this will be 522.08 meters per second. So this is how you solve such a question. Do we have any questions before we proceed to the next question here? Okay, so let's quickly move on to the next one. 